Things are never quite what they seem. We think we understand the world around us, but we really only see the outside, what it seems to be. I used to be just like you. I believed in humanity, the newspapers, soap commercials, politics, and history books. But one day, the world kicks you in the teeth, and you don't have any choice but to see things the way they really are. My name is Lucas Kane. My story is the one where an ordinary guy has something extraordinary happen to him. Maybe it was supposed to happen. Maybe it was my destiny or my karma or whatever. I know one thing for sure. Nothing's ever going to be the same again. It all started right here. Where else could it happen? New York, capital of the universe. The chessboard destiny chose for the last big game. I was just another pawn living my pawn's life. Until that night, when my life descended into chaos. What have I done? I... I didn't want... It was like a dream. Quick. I... I've, I've got to get out of here before somebody comes in here.
out of order. Got to get rid of it. Empty. Barred up. I can't get out this way. Hey, sir, your bill. Out of this neighborhood before the police. Nobody get goes anywhere. A crime has just been committed. I'm going to have to ask you to stay calm and wait here for the police to arrive and check your IDs. I live too far away to walk. I have to find another way to get back home. Diner, that's it. Why do they always wait for me to go on duty before they start killing each other in the middle of the night? Tyler, somebody gets murdered every day in New York. But especially when I'm on night duty. It's as if every psycho in the city has it in for me. If you want a bitch, do it inside. That way I don't have to freeze to death listening to it. <laughs> You're the boss, Carla. In five years on the force, I've seen some murders. But you never really get used to death. You just learn to live with it, that's all. I still don't know if it was fatigue, or cold, or something else. But I clearly remember the bad feeling I got when I walked into that restaurant. As if some part of me already knew that this time, something was different. How's it going, McCarthy? Evening, Inspector. I've been waiting for you. Hey, Tyler. Hey, Martin. So, what happened? Homicide. Probably a stabbing, from what I could see. Looks like it went down in the toilets. The murderer got away. Any witnesses? Yeah, me. I was in the toilets at the same time the guy was. By the time I discovered the body, the suspect had already left. What were you doing here? Were you on duty? I wasn't. I just happened to be here when the murder happened. I like to come by here after work. Kate's coffee is the best in the East End. Do we have any idea on who might be the murderer? He was a client at the restaurant. I don't think I ever saw him here before. We should ask Kate. Which table was the suspect sitting at? Oh, he was sitting at that table over there. Is that the waitress over there? Yeah. Kate Morrison, I think that you should interrogate her. If you don't mind me saying, go easy on her, Inspector. She's still in a state of shock. Thanks for your help, Martin. It's late. I think you can go home and get some sleep. I'm gonna wait until you're finished with Kate, if you don't mind. I want to make sure she gets home okay. Back then, we didn't know anything yet. We just thought it was cold, you know? If I had known, I probably would have stayed in bed that night, not gotten out till it was all over. That's the problem. If we knew ahead of time what was going to happen, we'd never leave the house. 
Hey, Garrett. Hey, Frank. How's it going? Hey, Carla. Hey, Carla. So, you guys find anything? We took some samples here and there. We're almost finished. We were just waiting for you before we took the body away. Okay, let's take a look. Several wounds on the left side of the chest, in the area of the heart. They appear to be knife wounds. Blood on the mop. The killer must have used it to clean up the mess. Why would he risk getting caught to do that? No trace of a struggle. Looks like the guy was taken totally by surprise. Bizarre. What? Well, he still has his credit card and a hundred bucks in cash on him. I guess the killer wasn't after his money. Unless there's a gang running around hiding bloody knives and toilets, I think I might have found the murder weapon. Great. Tell Garrett, have him check for prints on the handle. Okay. Hey, I think there's some blood in the sink. Maybe the killer washed up before he left. Yeah, could be. Tyler! What? This is a restroom, isn't it? No, this is a crime scene. It's cool, I'm done. Must be all that coffee I've been drinking to try and stay awake. Why is there blood here? Did you find anything? Possibly. I don't understand why there would be blood here. Maybe it belongs to the victim. Not likely. Get Garrett to analyze it. Then we'll know for sure. Man, stab some dude in the toilets? You gotta be crazy. This guy took a big risk. Anybody could have walked in here and surprised him. She's really something else. She's not always easy to get along with, but she's the best damn cop I know. Did you find anything, Tyler? <laughs> For that, I'd have to be able to keep my eyes open. Keep up the good work, Tyler. Hey, Garrett. Carla wants you to verify two or three things. Don't worry, I wrote it all down on this paper so you wouldn't forget. I had a feeling that Carla was gonna keep us up a little longer. You look hammered, Tyler. Yeah, this is my third night on call in a row. You know me, man. If I don't get my beauty sleep, it's zombie city. Ah, uh, you should be out of here pretty soon now. <laughs> no, no, Carla. She's capable of keeping everybody up till breakfast. And she is by far the most stubborn girl I ever met. My partner's gonna take your statement soon, ma'am. It shouldn't take too long. Thanks. Kate? I'm Inspector Carla Valenti. I'm in charge of the investigation here. Would you mind answering a few questions? No. Go ahead. Have you been working here long, Kate? It'll be 11 years next month. I've seen all sorts in this place. Down and outers, junkies, you name it. The till's been robbed a few times, but murder? That's a new one. Johnny was such a nice guy. Did you know the victim well? John was a regular. He came every Monday. He always ordered the same thing and I left a nice tip. 
What was he like, Kate? Do you think you could describe him for me? I only saw him for a few seconds. I guess he was about average height, fairly young. That's all I can remember. What was the man doing before the murder happened? He was there for a while. He was reading, I think. Do you know whether the victim had any enemies? Anybody that might want to kill him? John was just a nice, normal guy. I can't see why anybody would want to kill him. Was John here alone? Did he speak with anyone? John always came alone. We chatted a bit. The weather, his job, the usual stuff. He never talked to anybody else. Can you tell me what you saw? There weren't that many people tonight. It's usually pretty calm during the week. I was just chatting with Martin at the bar. I didn't even see John get up. Oh my god. You have to try to be strong, Kate. I know that this has been a shock for you, but you're the only one who can help us find the suspect. My shift was almost over. I was just chatting with Martin at the bar. John got up and went to the restroom. The man must have followed him. When he came back out, I noticed that he hadn't paid his bill. I'm careful, because that happens a lot here, people forgetting to pay their bill. What happened next? The guy just ran off without paying. It wasn't until Martin found John's body that I realized... Did you hear anything while John was in the toilets? Sound of a struggle or yelling? No, I didn't notice anything. Did you happen to notice anything strange about the suspect's behavior before he went into the restroom? No. You yeah, wait. Yes. I remember something. I came back at one point just to check whether he needed anything. He didn't answer me. He just stared straight ahead. It was weird. I didn't push it. I thought maybe this guy is a little crazy. God. If I had only known. Do you think that you would recognize the suspect? I'll never forget that face. Perfect. Do you think that you could come down to the station tomorrow and help us construct a likeness of the killer? Yeah. I'll do whatever you think I can to help catch him. Thank you very much for your help, Kate. I hope you find the bastard who did it. People like that just don't deserve to live. I promise you, we'll do everything in our power to find him. Go home now and try to get some sleep. Martin will make sure you get home okay. Good night. Frank, can you verify all of the calls that came through this phone tonight? You got it, Carla. Tyler, I'm going to take a look outside. Good evening, sir. Whoa! <laughs> hey, uh, babe. <laughs> what can I do for you? Someone was killed in that restaurant tonight. Did you happen to see anything or anyone unusual? Did I see something? Huh. I don't see nothing. I mind my own business. My name is Carla Valenti. And you? What's your name? My name? <laughs> what the hell is my name? Nobody uses it anymore. Guess I just forgot it. <laughs> yeah, oh, Bogart, yes. Uh, my friends call me Bogart. <laughs> Must be because I look so much like that actor. Dear fella. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna go try to get someplace warm.
Take care of yourself. I saw someone! Yeah. Or rather, something. Nobody remembers him, but I saw him! I saw him come out the back door! Ah, oh, it was evil. The devil himself. What did he look like? Can you describe him? Huh? Who? Uh, who? You drink too much, baby. You, you, you're talking nonsense. <laughs> nonsense. <laughs> The door only opens from the inside. Hello? It's me. Did you already fall back asleep? Tyler? What time is it? Oh, hell. When are you coming back? I won't be long, baby. Go back to sleep. I'll be there when you wake up. Catch you later. So, Sherlock, stuck outside? Leave me alone, oh. Tyler. Steak and fries. Looks like he barely touched his food. Strange. Coffee's not on the bill. Martin says this was the guy's table. A cup of coffee and a soft drink? That's weird. He's a caffeine addict. Or else, he wasn't alone. A book. The Tempest by Shakespeare. If this is his, it's a pretty weird book for a killer to be reading. Garrett, there's a book under this table. Why don't you check it out for Prince? You got it, Carla. You ready to go, Tyler? I think I've seen everything I need to see. Are you sure? We can take another look around if you want. No, nope, we're good. Let's head home. Okay, let's bust. Cool. Carla agrees to go. Let's get into the car before she changes her mind. Ready and go to work. Oh, my head. It feels like somebody shoved a steel bar in my brain and then melted it. Gotta make it stop. That should help my migraine. Notice reads, don't take with alcohol. Zarathustra by Nietzsche. I've read it so many times I know half of it by heart.
parents, Marcus and me, before the accident. Serious, Marcus. I'll meet you in half an hour at the park. See you there. Yesterday at 7.30 p.m. Lucas, it's Tiffany. I thought maybe I'd pop over tomorrow night after I leave the hospital and pick up a few things. Well, call me back. New York Police, please open the door. Hey, what's that? Stay where you are and put your hands in the air. These images in my head, I must be losing my mind. This will hide the blood, in case anyone comes in the room. I'll change the sheets later. Occur in East End Restaurant. An especially horrible murder was committed last night in the restroom of a local restaurant. The killer is a man in his 30s of average height with brown hair. Police are already searching for the man and will be releasing a composite sketch in the next few days. Police, please open the door. The police, they know. They've, they've come to arrest me. 
Police! Open up! Just a minute, I'm coming! I can't let them find any evidence linking me to last night. I've got a couple seconds to hide everything before I get the door. Sir, this is the New York Police. I must... Just a second, I'm looking for the keys! Immediately. Now, I will be forced to knock it down. I I'm sorry to make you wait like that. I, I was in the shower. Are you Lucas Kane? Yes. Mr. Kane, the neighbors heard yelling from your apartment. Is there a problem? Oh, yeah. Yeah, that was me. I cut myself on some broken glass, and I freaked out a little. Fortunately, it wasn't a really big deal. Would it be all right if I took a little look around your apartment? <sighs> Whatever. Go ahead. What happened to your wrist, sir? I told you, I had a stupid accident with some broken glass. Holy cow! When you cut yourself, you go all the way, don't you? Thank you for your cooperation. Uh, sorry to have bothered you, sir. You know how it is. With everything that's been going on, uh, we prefer to be careful. I understand. Long, Mr. Kane. When Marcus and I were kids, we were inseparable. He's the one who took care of me after our parents died. We kind of grew apart after he became a priest. But he's still the only person I really trust. The only one who might believe that I had nothing to do with all this mess. I'm happy to see you. I missed you. It's been a while. Two years. So tell me what's happened, Lucas. I've killed a man, Marcus. It happened in a restaurant last night. It's like I was possessed, in a sort of trance, like I was a puppet on a string. I saw what I was doing, but I was powerless to stop it. My god. I can't believe this, Lucas. Tell me that it wasn't you. You're not capable of something like that. And there's this, too. You cut your wrists? Before the murder, I, I carved these symbols on my arms with a knife. I don't know if they mean anything. This... murder? I exactly how did it happen? Well, after work last night, I stopped at a little diner to get something to eat. I read a book at my table, I think. And after, it's just a black hole. I don't remember anything. Right up until I found myself in the toilets with a knife in my hand. It, it, was, it was horrible. You say that you were in a sort of a trance. But what do you mean by that? Are you talking about magic? Or sorcery? Or something like that? Marcus, I don't have an explanation. I'm just telling you what happened, that's all. I'm only certain about one thing. I'm not the one who really killed that man. Had you been drinking? Or taking drugs? You know that I don't do that, Marcus. While I was doing this, horrible thing. I saw something, or, or rather someone. Was somebody else there with you? No, it was, it was like a sort of vision. I saw a man in the middle of hundreds of candles, and, and there was this little girl. You 
saw a little girl. She seemed alone, lost. She, she asked me to help her. What happened to me, Marcus? What am I supposed to do now? You know me better than anyone, Marcus. Help me. Listen, Lucas, I... I'm a bit lost here. This whole story is just so bizarre. Maybe you need some professional help. Most cases of possession are known to actually stem from psychiatric problems. Marcus, I don't have a psychiatric problem. I'm not crazy. I am a priest, Lucas. The fact that you have taken a life is a very serious matter. I told you that it wasn't me, Marcus. All these years and nothing's changed. You still never listen to me. Lucas, don't ask me to make a choice between my faith and my brother. I'm not a murderer, Marcus. You're the only person I can trust. I'm just asking you to believe me. Very well. I'll do whatever I can for you, but I can't do anything that goes against my beliefs. Look, I, I need to get some answers. I'll, I'll call you. Here. You need this more than I do. Marcus, you know that I don't believe in all that. Thanks. Slip on the ice. I've got to stop him. The cop in the restaurant. If I don't do something, the child will die. If I do do something, the cop will recognize me. What am I going to do? Consciousness. Quick, I've got to go back up before I run out of air. not too late. Patrol 324, kid just fell into the water. Send an ambulance right away. Man, what courage. The kid would have died. That guy's a hero. He dove into freezing water to save the kid. The kid never would have made it out of there without him. The cop recognized me. We both knew it. It's hard to say why he didn't turn me in. Maybe he decided I was even. I had taken a life and given one back. Nothing really changed for me. I was still wanted for murder by the police. But when I left that park, I knew I could look myself in the mirror again without cringing. I've got this really bad habit for a cop. Once I start working on a case, I can't think about anything else. I'm exhausted. I haven't gotten a wink of sleep all night. Something's bothering me about this murder, but I just can't seem to put my finger on what it is. Hi, Carla. How you doing today? Hi, Doug. Not too bad. Is Tyler here yet? No, not that I know of. So, ready for that big retirement? Eh, 
working on it. <laughs> Hey, Carla, can you tell your partner to pay me back that hundred bucks he owes me? I've been waiting six months for it now. Can't help you there, Jeffrey. Talk to him about it. He's been avoiding me like the plague. Plus, you know, you're the only one he listens to. Catch you later, Jeffrey. Hi, Carla. Hi, Garrett. Oh, wait, Carla. I got some results back on the tests we did for that restaurant murder. Great. As soon as Tyler gets here, we'll come and see you. Okay, I'll be at my desk all morning. Tyler hates it when anyone touches his stuff. Tyler still hasn't gotten rid of this basketball. Funny, I thought I'd been pretty clear. Tyler is still not here. I'd better try to give him a ring. Yeah? Know what time it is? Oh, shit. Get a move on. The waitress is coming this morning to flesh out the composite on the killer. I'm on my way. Stay a little longer. Mm, sorry, babe, but I really gotta go. I'll make some coffee. Okay, I'll grab a shower, get dressed, and then I'm out of here. Man, I love watching her when she's sleeping. I've known her for two years now. She still rocks my world the way she did the first time I ever saw her. I thought you were in a hurry. Hey, I always got two minutes for you, babe. Only two minutes? Carla, I'm on my way. Uh, yeah, I know. No, I, no, I, I just had a little problem, so I'll... Yeah, okay, okay, I'm right there. Whew, girl. Okay, this time I really am out of here.
statuette of socks, one of the characters in my favorite video game. Hey, you're a good-looking guy, you know that? Sam looks like she's sulking, and I know what's bothering her. Go back to bed, Sam. You're gonna catch a death of cold like that. I'm not cold. Oh, look, Sam, please don't start. I got no intention of dying today. I'm sick of living in fear like this. Every morning, I'm, I'm terrified that something's gonna happen to you. I know how you feel, Sam. There's a lot of violence out there. But if nobody does anything, it's all gonna go to shit. We're gonna have kids someday. I wanna leave them a world that's a little better than the one we got now. But why does it have to be you who's out there risking his life, Tyler? Why couldn't we just go to Florida and work with my family and live a normal life like everybody else? Why do I have to wonder if you're gonna die every day? Take over your parents' store? Can you see me selling shoes from behind a counter while kids are out there killing each other in the streets? I belong here where I can do some good, not in Florida. I love you, Tyler. Hi, Tyler. Oh, uh, Carl is looking for you. Yeah, I know. So, you ready for retirement, man? Yeah, <laughs> I'm working on it. Hey, Tyler, what do you know? Just the guy I was looking for. Oh, shit. You remember that hundred bucks I loaned you about six months ago? I'd really like for you to get that back to me as soon as possible. Like maybe now, for example? Jeffrey, I'm gonna be honest with you, man. I got no more money. I gave it all to charity in an effort to make the world a better place for you and for me. That's real funny, Tyler. Now give me my hundred bucks before I get really pissed. Yo, let me make you a deal. I'll play you a game of b-ball for your hundred bucks. If you win, I'll give you two hundred bucks right then. But if you lose, we cool. You'll give me two hundred bucks if I win. You got my word, man. All right, you're on. But don't even think about not paying me if you lose, because that... Don't worry, Jeffrey. I'll come by and see you when I get five minutes. The waitress hasn't come in yet? She won't be long. Garrett got the lab results. Shall we go? All right, let me hang up my coat. I'll be right with you. Okay. See you in a minute.
So, what do you want to start with? What did you find on the knife? Got some good prints off it. They matched those found on the fork and glass at the suspect's table. So, the murderer was definitely at that table. Anything on the blade? I'm getting to that. We definitely had blood from the victim, but the weird thing is we also found blood from the killer. What about the pool of blood in the stall? You're not going to believe this. The blood wasn't from the victim, it was from the killer. What was he doing bleeding in the stall? I have absolutely no idea. Did you find anything on the coffee cup? The only prints we found belonged to the waitress. That's impossible, man. That cup was half empty. Somebody must have drank it. Were there any prints on the book that was under the table? Yep, and they matched the ones on the fork and the glass. So it was definitely his book. It looked like a fairly old book. Maybe we can get some more stuff out of it. Did you get the list of calls that came through the telephone at the restaurant? Yep. There were about a dozen in the four hours that preceded the murder. I'll send you a list by email. So, what do you think about all that? I don't have any explanation for the blood in this stall. The victim could have wounded the killer during a struggle, but it doesn't make sense that it would be in the stall. It's as though the killer had wounded himself. Hey, why not? You get clumsy fools in every other profession. Why not killers? That's kind of a flimsy explanation, Garrett. Uh, to each his own, Carla. I do the testing, you figure out the reason why. Thanks for your help, Garrett. See you later. So, what do we do now? You go take care of the composite. I'm gonna go check with the coroner and see if he got anything from the body. Okay. Catch you later. I was burning with fever. I was shaking all over. The migraine was back and drilling holes into my brain. And to top it off, I couldn't keep enough food down. My body seemed to be fighting against something, but I still didn't know what. Gotta just live my life no matter what. Don't raise any suspicions. Despite the state I was in, I decided to go to work as though nothing had happened. I'm in charge of computer maintenance in the Naser and Jones Bank. I share my office with Warren. Do you know what time it is? What's wrong with you? I had a little problem on the way back in. I had to go back home and change my clothes. That guy is so bizarre. He gives me the creeps. What'd you say? What? You were saying something? No, I didn't say anything. Are you sure you're all right, Lucas? I... I heard something, as though I could read his mind. Tiffany and I. About two years ago, I guess. I haven't been able to throw it away yet. Lucas? You okay? Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm fine. <phone rings> Lucas Kane. Hello, Lucas. Oh, hello, Tiffany. I left a message on your machine last night. Um, I'd like to come and pick up some stuff at your place. Could I come over tonight? I should be back home around 8 o'clock tonight. Okay, it won't take too long. Are you doing okay, Lucas? I gotta let you go. I'm doing a thing here. Bye.
Look out, the cup! Lucas, is there a problem? No, I, I, I just thought... It seemed so real. I saw that coffee cup fall. Hello? Yes, sir. We'll get on that right away. Station 62 is down. I'll go. No, forget it. I'll, I'll handle it. Whatever you say. It happened. Just like I'd seen it. Like the cop in the apartment. Is it possible that I can really see things before they happen? Lucas? Lucas, what happened? Ah! Did you hear me? Are you all right? Hey, you've hurt yourself. You're bleeding. I, uh, I gotta go. I didn't have the slightest idea what had happened. The one thing I do know, those things almost killed me.
Okay, we're going to get started. Uh, if you prefer, you can wait outside. I'd rather stay here if you don't mind. I've studied some medicine. I've seen dead bodies. Oh. As you wish. No apparent hematoma on the body. Two broken fingernails on the right hand. He didn't see the murderer until the last moment. He didn't have time to struggle. Large hematoma on the back of the cranium. Uh, mm, fracture of the occipital bone. He cracked his head when he fell. Abnormal dilation in, um, both pupils. Why are his pupils dilated? What did he see before he died? Three knife wounds between the third and fifth ribs in the proximity of the heart. Uh, the blade was driven in deeply. Uh, the stabs seem to have been delivered from the front and moved from left to right. The murderer was left handed. One stab neatly cut the aorta. And the other two cut the left and right coronary arteries. He really didn't have a chance. The blade slipped right through the ribs to cut the arteries. Do you think it was just by chance? Hmm. Difficult to say. The chances of cutting all three main arteries to the heart with three lucky stabs are fairly small, but um, it's not impossible. It was definitely the knife wounds that caused his death? Yes. The three arteries leading to the heart were cut. Uh, the heart was literally uh, disconnected from the rest of the body. I uh, saw a case like this once before. It was a while back now, in the 90s, I think. Exactly the same. Three stabs around the heart, each one cutting a main artery. It really struck me at the time. I wondered how such a thing were possible. It was the, um, what was that name again? Karsten or Kirsten, something like that. Kirsten? Yes, that's it, Kirsten. You know about that case? Not yet. But I'm sure as hell gonna find out. Come in. H hello detective. Hello, Mrs. Morrison. Uh, thanks for taking the trouble to come down. Uh, please, take a seat. Now, we're going to try and assemble a composite photo of the suspect you saw. We have a computer program to help us. You'll see, it's really simple. It's kind of like a video game. Have you ever played a video game, Mrs. Morrison? No. Ah, it doesn't matter. You're going to do fine. The most important thing is to try to remember exactly what happened. The program consists of several types of facial features. You scroll through them until it looks like the man you saw. You understand? Yes. Well, I think I do. Okay. Let's go. Now, is this the face of the person you saw? Yes. At least, th that's how I remember him. Thank you very much for your help. We're going to get this picture out to all the airports, trains, and bus stations, and to all of our patrolmen. If this guy is still in New York, we're going to find him. And go buy yourself a video game. I felt empty. After what happened at the office, I began to wonder if I wasn't going nuts. I'm so totally exhausted that I can't fall asleep. I'm afraid of the dreams I might have. I wander around the room a little. I guess I'll go to sleep when I can't keep my eyes open any longer.
Something is changing inside me. I'm stronger and quicker. My God, what's happening to me? I came to pick up my stuff. I hope I'm not disturbing you. No, I'm just a little bit sleepy. Come in. Have a seat. So, how's life? I'm pretty swamped with work at the hospital right now, and I'm not completely moved in yet, but I'm doing fine. Want something to drink? I think there's still a bottle of gin laying around in the kitchen somewhere, if you want. Yeah, I'd love some. I'll go and get your stuff. It's just two boxes. I'm not sure exactly where they'd be now, but they shouldn't be too hard to find. Uh, they've got my initials on them. Here they are. I think that's everything. Is everything okay, Lucas? You look stressed. I... I've got some big problems right now. I can't really talk about it, but it's fairly serious stuff. If there's anything that I can do for you, Lucas... Man, I wish there was, but no. Thanks for offering, though. Hey, I, I miss you, you know? I miss you, too. Are you... are you with anybody? I'm sorry, I shouldn't be asking you that. No, no, it's okay, I don't mind. No, I'm still alone. And you? Yeah, I'm alone too. I've had a little trouble getting over you. You still playing? You know, I really haven't even thought about it lately. Play a couple of notes for me, will ya? You know, in memory of the good times. Okay, sure.
Well, I'm gonna go. Little girl again. She seems so real. I must be losing my mind. You okay, Lucas? I I'm fine, Tiffany. I'm, I'm just fine. Ten years. Ten years since my parents were killed in a car accident. I've never completely recovered from losing them. You never really get over something like that. Considering all that's been happening to me lately, I thought maybe I should go and meditate at their grave a little this morning. I'm happy that you could come. You can't spend your whole life just sitting in the corner. Lucas... Lucas? You coming? I don't want to, Marcus. Leave me alone. I've about had it with you, Lucas. You're always off by yourself. You never talk to anyone. You never play with anyone. I'm starting to think maybe you're crazy. You're weird, that's for sure. Is that bad? Come on, do me a favor. Just play with everybody this one time. How about hide and seek? We could go play in Hangar 4. No way! You know we're not allowed to play in there. Who cares? We can get in through that hole in the fence like last time. Nobody will see us. We can get inside the hangar from the back door. Good idea. Let's do it! Are you coming with us, Lucas?
before. It's gonna burn. Marcus and the others will get caught in the fire. Quick, I've gotta warn someone. We've gotta save them before it's too late. Lucas, what are you doing here? I thought you didn't want to play. Get out of here now, Marcus. The hangar's going to explode. Huh? How can that... Don't ask any questions, Marcus. Get out now. It's about to explode. I'll keep looking for the others. What are you doing here, Lucas? The game's over. Everybody's gone. You can come out now. Ah, oh, that's just great. Why didn't anybody tell me? What are you doing here, Lucas? Get out! Nobody wants to play with you. You need to get out of here, Kurt. The hangar's gonna blow. You don't know what you're talking about. You're just a retard, Lucas. Your mother sent me to find you. I'm gonna go and tell her that you're messing around in here. What? My mom? You say one word to her and you're dead meat. I'll deal with you later, freak. Bug off, Lucas. You're going to give me away. The hangar's going to explode. You gotta get out of here right now. What kind of crap is this? You get out of here and stop trying to ruin the game. You are going to get out of the hangar right now. I'm not kidding. Shh, Lucas, you're a total nutcase. Lucas, are you hurt? No, just a few scratches. And the others? I managed to warn them in time. They all got out. How did you know it was going to happen, Lucas? I saw it. I saw it before it happened. Don't ask me how. You know they'll never believe that. I know. Lucas, are you all right, Lucas? Lucas, can you hear me? I did a little checking around. Without giving your name, obviously. I was told about a person who is familiar with, let's say, unusual phenomena. I think that maybe she could help you. Here, this is her address. You know that I don't believe in any of this, Lucas, but I sincerely hope that she can give you some kind of answer. I hope so too. The report from the morgue kept me up all night. Rather than answering any questions, it just added new ones. Did the murderer intentionally give the victim a slow, painful death? Is there any link to the mysterious Kirsten case? Who sent me that email about Kirsten and why? This training session with Tyler is just what I need. I need to cleanse my spirit and just breathe a little. Damn, you look a little out of it, Carla. You sure you're cool? I'm fine. Why wouldn't I be? Okay. Let's warm up a little then go for it. Let me know when you're ready. Okay. Sounds good. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Las Vegas for tonight's match between Terrible Tyler Miles and Killer Carla Valenti. Oh, yeah. And who's always kicking out the crap about me acting like a kid all the time? Game man. 
shower and get back to work. Can't get that restaurant murder out of your head, huh? I just feel like there's a piece of the puzzle missing. You're busting your head for nothing. The guy's a psycho. End of story. Yeah, maybe. I just want to find him and make sure he never does it again. We'll get him. The guy who leaves that much evidence behind on a murder one, he's gonna slip up somewhere. I hope it's that simple, Tyler. I really do. Oh, how's that restaurant murder case coming along? We've got a few leads, but no suspects for the moment. There's some troubling elements about this case. We know it probably wasn't premeditated, and it wasn't done for money. What's your theory? Several elements match the ammo of a ritual killing or a mystical trance. The choice of weapon, the killer's cutting himself, the manner in which the victim was stabbed with precise cuts to the heart. All this points to a religious sacrifice. He might be a Satanist or something like that. Do you think there's much chance he'll kill again? We don't have enough information to determine that right now. He might do it again tomorrow or we might never hear from him again. I want this nut job behind bars ASAP. Do whatever you have to do. So, what's the plan now? Check the local hospitals to see if they've had any men with knife wounds in. Check with all the psycho wards to see if they've got any ex-patients out on the streets who might have been capable of something like this. Okay, anything else? Yeah, a book we found under the table. Garrett left it on your desk. See if you can make anything of it. Okay, I'll get on all that stuff right away. What are you gonna work on? There's something that I need to verify. As far back as I can remember, I've been frightened by small spaces. Whenever I'm in a small, confined place, I start to panic. I have trouble breathing, and I need to get out right away. Yeah, you've heard the name. Claustrophobia. Well, I had decided not to let my fear control me. I decided to try and fight it every chance I got. I'm going to stay calm. Everything is going to be fine. I'm going to breathe deeply and walk without stopping until I find the computer terminal. Here's the archive terminal. I can consult the file here. The save files are classified by year. Kirsten Files should be in the 1990s. It shouldn't be too hard to find. I think I found it. The file is empty. No report, no evidence, nothing. Wait. Here's the name of the detective in charge of the investigation. Robert Mitchell.
Carla asked me to see what I could find out about the book we found in the diner. It might be able to tell us something about the killer. I inquired in the office, and I ended up in a bookshop specializing in old books run by a guy named Takeo. Yo! You lose something? Excuse me? Oh, I am sorry to cause waiting on you. Your presence here brings honor to my miserable shop. Uh, my name is Takyo. Uh, tell me what I can do to make you happy? Damn. This guy looks just like that old Chinese dude in Gremlins. If he offers me a little box with a monster in it, I am gone. I was digging around in my closet and I found this old book. Thought it might be worth something. Ah, unhappy. I am but a worthless well of ignorance. My tiny expertise extend wholly to books I serve here. Thanks anyway. At least I tried. Ah, uh, maybe there is something I can do for you. One client order very rare book. Since this morning I look for it, but impossible to find. You. Find this book, and I tell you all you want to know. So, what does it look like, this book you want? Ah, easy. It from same collection as this one. Okay, I ought to be able to handle that. Bring back the sacred diamond of the old sage of the mountain, and he will give you the magic talisman. Oh, man. What am I, in a video game? There's something handwritten in pencil here. To my brother for his 18th birthday, M.K. Hmm, interesting. torn piece of paper. Looks like a computer printout of a bunch of numbers. Fell out of the book. Must have been a bookmark. I'll check it out at the office. Okay, here's your book. Oh, great. You found it. Thanks, dude. What do you want to know about that book? Is it just me, or did you lose your accent? Oh, yeah. That's for the customers. Ah, they love that wise old Japanese master stuff. <laughs> I was born in Brooklyn, man. <laughs> I never been no further than Long Island. <laughs> I'm more American than you are, man. Is there any way to find out who would have sold this book? Nah. This book ain't worth enough for any seller to remember it. Yo, thanks for your help. No problem. Come by again, okay? Here it is. Are... are you Agatha? Why do you want to talk to Agatha? My name is Lucas Kane. I have a problem and I need to speak to her about it. 
a problem. <laughs> and who on earth doesn't have problems? One need not have eyes to see. Be kind, young man. Push me over to my birds. It'll be more comfortable for us to talk over there. The bird is such a unique animal. It can spend its entire life locked up in a cage and yet still keep on singing away. What brings you here, young man? Tell me, what is your cage like? I killed a man. It, it was like I was possessed. I watched it all happen, but I had no control over my actions. Sounds like a rather commonplace story to me. Don't you think that it might simply be because you've gone mad? I had a vision of another man making exactly the same movements as me, and of a little girl who called out to me for help. In the cupboard, you'll find a little bag of seeds. Be a good boy. Feed some to my little darlings, will you? Do you have any memory of what could have triggered your loss of control? Did you drink something, hear a sound, or see an image which seemed out of the ordinary? I have no idea. In fact, I can't remember anything that happened to me from the time I entered the place to when I woke up again afterwards. Have you experienced any other strange manifestations since then? Have you had any odd dreams or visions? Yes. I see things as if the reality in front of me was deforming, becoming horrible. Are you able to attach anything concrete to your vision, such as a symbol or a sign, maybe a word? When I regained control of myself after the murder, this symbol had been cut into my wrist with a knife. A snake. Two open jaws. Oh, dear God. What does it mean? There's only one way for me to be sure. Please, push me into the sitting room. You'll find some candles in one of the cupboards. Take them and place them in the candle holders. There should be some matches in the kitchen. Go find them and light the candles. Perfect. We're almost ready to begin. Turn off the light, close the curtains, and sit down next to me. The only way to understand what has happened to you is to try to go deep into your unconscious memory. Whoever it was that forced you to commit this murder has erased himself from your memory. But there still must be a trace in your unconscious. I can help you to locate it. It's an exhausting ceremony, and there's always a risk involved. Do you, or do you not wish to try it? Yes, I do. Give me your hands. Now, close your eyes. I want you to empty your mind and open wide the doors to your unconscious. And let me enter there. That's it. We're still together. 
Lucas, are you there? Yes. I want you to return to the restaurant, just before the events began. Evacuate all extraneous thoughts, and wander freely through your memory. Standing outside the restaurant. I want you to enter the restaurant now. I've gone into the restaurant. What do you see? I see some customers. And I see the waitress. Can you see the table where you were sitting? I'm looking. There's a police officer. He's sitting at the counter. Concentrate, Lucas. Now, walk to your table. Standing next to my table, but it's empty. You haven't arrived and sat down there yet? Yes, I have. My meal is already on the table. I, I think this is when I murdered him. I... Stay calm, Lucas. I want you to tell me exactly where you are. I'm... I'm in the restroom. And so is the other man. What's he doing? He's urinating. He doesn't suspect anything. And you, Lucas? Where are you? I don't know. I can't see myself. There I am. I was in a toilet stall. Oh my god. I'm holding a knife. He doesn't see me. Calm yourself, Lucas. Keep your concentration. I... I can't control my steps. I'm walking up behind the man. He doesn't see me. I don't want to. I don't want to, but I can't stop myself. I want you to re-enter the restaurant. But now, it is prior to going into the toilet stall. Do you understand, Lucas? Before. Where are you now? I'm in the restaurant dining room again. Are you sitting at your table? Yes, I am. I can see myself. What are you doing, Lucas? I'm eating. I'm eating and reading a book. A book? Yes. Shakespeare. The Tempest. What else do you see? As I told thee before, I am subject to a tyrant. A sorcerer, that by his cunning hath cheated me of the island. What did you say? It's a passage from Shakespeare's Tempest. That's what you're reading, is it not? Yes. Someone's coming toward me. A man. Who is it? A customer? I don't know. I think so. I can't see his face. And what does he say to you? I... I, I don't know. I, I can't remember. You must concentrate, Lucas. You need to remember. It's one of my favorite books. A shame so few people read Shakespeare these days. Would you mind if I sat down for a moment? Ah, it's just that... The man sat down at my table and... Now the waitress is coming. Sir? A coffee, please. The waitress. It's as if she didn't see the man, like he was invisible. So much has been written about the Tempest, especially concerning the theme of magic. And now, what's happening, Lucas? I, 
I don't know. The man gives off a very strange energy. It's hard to describe. Go on, Lucas. What happens after that? Do you believe in the power of magic? No, I don't. Listen, um... You're wrong. You know there's much more to our universe than can be perceived by the naked eye. Your coffee, sir. Thanks, Kate. The waitress has brought him his coffee, but she's talking to me as if I was the one who ordered it. She doesn't know that he's there. She can't see him. And now what's happening? Listen, I don't want to be rude, but I'd rather eat alone. Master Naktilan, Katha Nekle, Kortniklan, Niklan, Neknestan, I'm paralyzed. I can't feel my body. I can't move. The man, Lucas. Where is the man? He, he stood up. He's gone out. He's in my head now. He controls me. Follow the man, Lucas. Hurry. I command you to follow that man closely. He's going out the rear door. Follow him. Your mind and his are now linked. You can see what he sees. You know who that man was, don't you, Agatha? No. I don't know. I'm not sure who he is. Yes, you do know who he is. You understood it all as soon as you felt the scars on my arms. What do these symbols mean, Agatha? Tell me what that man's done to me! You should go now, Lucas. There's nothing more that I can do for you. You could at least explain what the hell's happening to me! He made me kill a man! I want to know! I need to know! I have to verify certain things. There's nothing more I can tell you today. Come back tomorrow night at the same time. I'll explain more then. Training Sergeant Mitchell? That's him, in the second to last row. Thanks. Sergeant Mitchell? Yes? I'm Inspector Carla Valenti. Would you mind if I asked you a few questions concerning one of my investigations? Young lady, I haven't worked in investigations for a long time. I doubt I can be much help. It's concerning an old case, but I'm still looking into it. The Kirsten case? Because you can't locate the file, is that right? Yes, that's right. The file's been classified. How'd you like to do some target practice with me? Sure. Why not? Your gun is right in front of you. Go ahead. You're a very good shot. I have to say you're a heck of a lot better than most I see around here. So, what do you want to know about the Kirsten case? Well, for instance, what exactly happened? Guy named Kirsten's calmly shopping in his local supermarket. He's in the kitchen accessories aisle when someone picks up a knife and stabs him to death. Did he know his victim? No, at least the investigation never found a connection. Apparently it was a temporary insanity. Was the killer apprehended? 
He didn't move from the spot. We found him sitting on the floor next to the victim, like he was waiting for us, with this blank stare on his face. Did he have any history of drug addiction? Or previous psychiatric problems? That's the first angle I looked into, but no. No drugs, no drinking, just a very normal Joe. Family man, wife and kids, good neighbor. Maybe he just cracked, lost it for a moment. Some people are like time bombs just waiting to go off. That's the first theory I had, until I saw the coroner's report. Each knife entry cut cleanly into an artery, leading to the heart with perfect accuracy. Precision like that, I mean, the guy had a one in a million chance of doing that, even if he'd been a surgeon. Excellent target. Looks like you're a natural. Then what happened? You didn't stop your investigation there, did you? No, this case really intrigued me. What could have motivated him to do something like that? I mean, I checked out piles of leads and, and discovered almost by accident that this wasn't the first. There had been other killings with the same profile. You mean where the killer had the same bizarre M.O. and stuck around afterwards? Exactly. Three weeks earlier, on the other side of town, another stabbing victim in the middle of the street, no motive. Then I discovered a third case, two months prior to that. Then another, and another, and always the same M.O. And in all these cases, the perp was arrested? Nope. Either they committed suicide before we got there, or else they went nuts. But each time, the stabbing was identical. They all cut the arteries leading to the heart very precisely. Then they carved a snake on their own forearms. Then what happened? Then I was pulled off the Kirsten case without explanation. They threw me a bone with a job as an instructor at the academy I ended up taking. But I've never forgotten those killings. I always suspected that there was something going on there. And I think that's why they took me off it. So I couldn't go sticking my nose in. When I got here and first mentioned the case to you, you knew the file had been classified. Tell me, how'd you know that? Every one of the files on those killings was locked up tight without anybody even checking for links between them. Strange, don't you think? You should drop this one, detective. This is not just a murder case. There's something very odd going on behind the scenes. Looks like I'll be starting a new file. I'd worked good and hard on the investigation, done everything Carla had asked. Now I just wanted to relax and play some...
comes in, he scores. Ladies and gentlemen, that's our play of the day. Lucas Kane. Nasta Nakdilan, Katan Nekli, Courtney Glan, Nitan, Nesta, Apani, Ohani, Islan, I know.
Lucas's terrifying story haunted me all night long. I had to see him, to talk to him. I had to find out what Agatha had told him. I wanted to look my brother in the eye and hear the truth. I'd never been to his apartment before, and it took me some time to find it. Lucas Kane. That's it. Lucas? Lucas, open the door! Lucas! I could swear that I heard a scream coming from inside. The doorman said Lucas was at home, but he isn't opening. Lucas is in danger. I've got no other choice. Lucas, for God's sake! Have you lost your mind? What's come over you? The walls... The walls were blown away, and the wind, the tempest, I... Why did you do this, Lucas? Why? Somebody tried to kill me. For heaven's sake, Lucas! There's no one else here but you and I. You were all alone when I arrived. All alone, Lucas! What's happening to me, Marcus? I don't know what's happening! It'll be all right, Lucas. Everything will be fine. I'm gonna help you. You'll see. Sure took your time. I was in the shower. What do you got? I got nothing. Dead end. Impossible to ID the page marker found in the book from the restaurant. It's got a series of numeric codes written on it, but it just looks like a lot of numbers to me. I, I thought you might have some ideas. Why don't you fax it to me? I wasn't tired anyway. I'm sure it'll make for good bedtime reading. Okay, I'll send it now. If you get any brainstorms, give me a ring. I'll be here for a while. Tonight's gonna be a long one. Okay, talk to you later, Tyler. Normally, I don't like leaving Sam home alone, especially now. But this bookmark had me intrigued. I had a gut feeling that I was holding the key that would identify our killer. I felt like I was closing in on him, and I wasn't about to go home to sleep until I figured out what this paper meant. Who could that be at this hour? I was feeling kind of bored, and thought as my official friendly neighbor you'd agree to share my boredom. And this excellent bottle of French Chablis. In my capacity as your friendly neighbor, I wouldn't think of refusing your boring invitation or your excellent wine, Tommy. I imagine that even a die-hard bachelorette like yourself must have some wine glasses around here somewhere. Hmm. <laughs> I think I do have some. Somewhere. Sit down, Tommy. I'll find him. A toast? All right. What to? To love, what else? I'll drink to that.
Are you with anyone? Well, actually, I did meet someone two weeks ago. He's very real and very nice. And he works in a bank, too. I think this time it could turn into something serious. Are you still single? What's a beautiful girl like you waiting for? Go find yourself a nice guy. If there's one thing New York has lots of, it's handsome men. I don't know. I guess the desire is just not there. My last romantic experiences were total disasters. I'm not ready for anything, or anyone, just yet. I'm happy to see you got your smile back. We all have our ups and downs, right? I always thought that people in New York didn't give a damn about gayness. They were so enlightened. How wrong I was. They still look at us as being different from so-called normal folks. Enough small talk. Look at what I brought. Tarot cards? I'm going to read your future. <laughs> you mean you know how to use those things? My grandmother was a psychic. She taught me how to read the cards when I was just a kid. She handed down her seeing powers to me. It really works, you know. What the cards foretell always come to pass. Let's see if you're going to meet your true soulmate or if you're going to die as a wrinkled old maid. <laughs> okay, Mr. Gypsy. Tell me what I'm supposed to do. It's easy. First take the cards and mix them up. Take two cards. There's going to be a dark period, an escape. Terrible danger. Take two more cards. You're not alone. You're following someone and he is... disturbing. He hides a heavy secret. Take two more cards, please. There is a curse, great suffering and fear. I see dark death and distress. Yes, just come to me whenever you need cheering up. Seriously, I'm sorry, Carla. This is not turning out to be as much fun as I thought. It's okay, Tommy. Let's see what horrors my destiny holds for me. Here are two more cards. One child, two destinies, a path toward life, the other path toward death. Carla, I think we'll stop there. I'm, I'm sorry, I don't know what happened. It's the first time I've ever read this sort of thing in the cards. Usually they don't express anything like this. Don't apologize, Tommy. It's just a silly game. I never believed in fortune-telling anyway. Well, I've got to get home. It's late. Good night, Carla. Good night, Tommy. It was real nice talking. Don't wait so long next time, okay? I promise. Mm. Oh, man. Nothing but stock quotes. How can anyone possibly decipher these things? They are... Wait a minute. That's it. I gotta call Carla right away. Hello? It's a list of stock quotes, Carla. Our bookmark was printed in a bank. Of course. It's so obvious. 
How'd you figure that out? I had a look on the internet. It was right under our noses from the beginning, and we never saw it. Now all we have to do is figure which bank printed it. Can you fax me the bookmark? I think I have an idea. I'll call you right back. I'm really sorry to bother you, Tommy. No problem. I wasn't ready for bed yet anyway. What can I do for you? It's about one of my investigations. I thought maybe you could help me with a question I have. I was wondering, is there a way to identify a bank from a list of stock quotes that they've printed? Normally, yeah. Banks always use watermarked paper, which shows the bank's ID code. The ID code is printed on a watermark? All right, I'll check our document to see. Thanks, Tommy. Good night. Night, Carla. Yeah? Our bookmark should be watermarked with the bank's ID code. I'll check it out and call you right back. I think I found it. Tyler? I've got the code. You should have no trouble identifying which bank it corresponds to. This time we've got our killer. I think I'll pay a little visit to the bank tomorrow. You want me to go? Okay, you go. We'll meet afterwards at the station and go over it all. See you tomorrow, Tyler. See you tomorrow. I finally convinced Marcus to let me go out. I'd slept most of the day and he'd stayed to watch over me. I needed to get out and get back in touch with reality. My physical condition was deteriorating rapidly. My mental state wasn't much better. I could feel myself slipping away. I knew that it wouldn't be long before I lost it. Hello, Detective Taylor Miles, New York Police. The police, they found me. Richard III. I often read Shakespeare. I like the sober, desperate tone. Marcus gave me this book, along with the one I left in the restaurant. Better not leave it lying around. Hello, I'm Detective Todd of Miles, New York Police. Are you Lucas Kane? I just got a couple of questions for you. Questions? What about? I'm working on a homicide case, and we have reason to believe that the murderer worked at this bank. What do you want to know? Could you confirm that this list came from here at the bank? I wonder if he's going to say anything about the watermark. The paper does come from here. It has our bank ID code and the watermark. Is there a way to establish where it was printed from? The manager already filled me in, but maybe we can learn something more. This kind of paper is used by stock buyers to print out their quotes. There's about a hundred of them here in the bank. This guy seems really tense. Probably nervous about being questioned by the police. Is there a problem, Mr. Kane? Huh? Oh, uh, no, no, sorry. Is there a way to determine where this particular document was printed out? What's his problem? Seems like my questions are upsetting him. No, not really. Our printers don't leave any identifiable marks. A witness helped us make a composite photo of the suspect. Would you mind taking a look at it for us? Hey, are you all right, sir? Uh, yes, I, I, I'm, I'm fine. I feel tense. I've got to keep cool. 
this remind you of anyone? Hey, this looks like a lot of people I know. It could even be me. Yeah, you're right. These composite photos can be a little vague. Yo, this is weird. The composite looks just like this guy right here. Sir, are you sure that you're all right? I... I thought that... Excuse me. Have you noticed anything unusual here at the bank lately? They already told me about what happened to this guy yesterday. I wonder if he's gonna mention it. Yes, why... Well, well, actually, I'm susceptible to epileptic seizures. They're fairly rare, but they can be violent. In fact, I had one yesterday, and I'm afraid I put on quite a show. But that's about the only unusual thing that's happened here recently. That's weird. His forearms are bandaged. I wonder what happened to him. Did something happen to your arms? Oh, I had a stupid accident doing some home repair work. I guess I'm not much of a Mr. Fix-It guy. Hey, is that you in the picture with the priest? Is he a friend of yours? That priest looks a lot like him. Maybe a member of his family? That's my brother, Marcus. <laughs> Sir, are you sure you're feeling all right? You don't look so good. I, I, I might have a little cold. Yo, he's lying straight up. I can smell it. Damn, maybe this is our guy right here. Stranger things have happened. Uh, I'm not feeling very well. I'm just gonna go and splash some water on my face. You go right ahead. I'll wait for you here. He's acting so strangely. I better take a quick look inside his desk before he gets back. His pen. There ought to be some fingerprints on it. That'll make it easy to see if this is our man. Shakespeare. Just like the book in the restaurant. That's worth checking out. I'll just, uh, remove it discreetly. There's something written on the picture. LKMK, June 2003. You feeling better? Yes, thanks. Well, I don't have any more questions. Uh, I'll let you get back to work. Thank you for your cooperation, sir. The noose is tightening. The police are closing in on me. They'll be back, and next time, they'll take me in. Agatha was my last chance. She's the only one who seems to understand what's happening to me. I just hope this time she'll give me some answers. Agatha? Agatha! It's Lucas! Someone just went out the window. Sir, I need to get your name before I can record your message. Sir, the police cruiser will be there in just a few minutes. Can you hear me, sir? Agatha! She's 
dead. They killed her. She was the only one who could help me, the only one who knew. New York Police. Anybody there? Hey, Kevin, call an ambulance. There's a body on the floor. What's up? Anybody home? Tyler? I didn't expect you so soon. Be a good boy and preheat the oven. Oh, and pour us a couple of glasses of champagne from the fridge. I'll be out in a minute. Hello, Detective Miles. Do you know what day it is today? Uh, well, we already had Christmas, so 4th of July? No, that's summer. No, you got me. Tyler. Okay, okay, babe. It's been exactly two years since I met the woman of my dreams. You want to put some music on? I feel like dancing. Tyler gave me a full report on what happened at Nazar and Jones. He emphasized that one of the employees was behaving strangely. A guy named Lucas Kane. Now, I had all the pieces of the puzzle. I just needed to put them all together to find our murderer. On my desk lay all the information from Nazar and Jones. On Tyler's desk, the clues from the restaurant. The identity of the killer was here somewhere. The two books are from the same collection and have the same dedication. They obviously belong to the same person. I've got my first link. I'll need another in order to establish proof that Kane is our man. <phone rings> Detective Valenti. Hi, Carla. It's Garrett. I called to tell you that I sent you the results of the testing we did on the prints on that pen. They should already be in your email. Perfect. Thanks, Garrett. I'll take a look right away. The taxi company should have sent you a list of taxi destinations from the same street as the diner the night of the murder. 
It should be on the facts in your office. Thanks. Bye, Garrett. Bye, Carla. No doubt about it, the prints from the restaurant and the pen come from the same person. This time, there's no reasonable doubt. Lucas Kane is the restaurant killer. I've got to tell Tyler right away. Come in. Oh, hi, Carla. I saw the light was on, so I thought I'd, uh, you know, come in and say hello. Nice to see you, Martin. It's calmer here at night. It helps me think a little clearer. Carla, I... This has been bothering me for a while. I need to talk to you. You see, I saw the killer from the restaurant. He saved a kid who was drowning in Central Park. The kid would have died without him. I was there when it happened. And it's stupid, but I just couldn't bring myself to arrest him after that. I just figured he'd earned a break. I'm really sorry. Oh, don't feel too bad about it, Martin. I might have done the same thing in your place. Well, I'll be around for at least another hour. Damn reports to type up. Come and see me if you need some company. Catch you later, Martin. Sorry, we're closed. Come back tomorrow. Oh, I won't be long. Nasta na tilan, neki bini na sa kwen, kasta nekli kwadi tilan na ay kwen tana. pieces together. All that's left is to arrest the killer. Captain Jones has given us everything we asked for. There's no chance of him escaping. Okay, this is it. Everybody in position. Copy that. I'll go in first. You cover me. Okay. Damn, what the hell is this? Cover me. I'm gonna check the doors. Missed him. Well, he's running now. He's running across the street. What should I do, Carla? Stop him. We're coming. Copy that. It happened again. Somebody died in the lavamatic. I saw it like I was there. Agatha's dead, so who's gonna tell me what's going on?
Put your hands in the air. Damn, the police. They already found me. I'll spend the rest of my days rotting in prison, and I'll never find out what really happened. No, it's not gonna happen like that. God just did? Shit, that's crazy. We need to catch him. Next time, he won't get away. Five men in the hospital. Four wrecked squad cars. A helicopter that just missed blowing up in our faces. Meanwhile, the killer takes a nice quiet ride on the subway. I hope there's a good explanation for all this. Nothing went according to plan, Captain. The operation was set up by the book and everybody did their jobs, but Kane displayed some abnormal abilities. Just what are you trying to tell me here? That this guy is Superman? That's your excuse? And you seriously expect me to buy that crap? Captain, we're not amateurs. If this guy was a tourist, we would have cuffed him and stuffed him in no time. We underestimated him. He's a lot more dangerous than we thought. I don't give a crap about your two-bit excuses. When the press finds out that Kane slipped through our fingers, they're gonna make me a laughingstock, and the mayor's gonna come looking for my head. Now, what is the plan, people? Are you on his trail? Kane's photo will be in every squad car, train station, and airport. We're going over every inch of his apartment and interrogating his associates. He can't stay hidden forever. I want every available man on Kane's ass right now. I want him locked up tight in 48 hours or less. You understand me? I want this nut job behind bars before he decides to cut somebody else. Now get out of here! Carla, I've been looking for you. We found some of Kane's prints in an apartment where we found the dead body of an old lady. And that's not all. There was a double murder last night in a lavamatic. One of the two victims was killed by knife blows to the heart. Garrett's already there. He's waiting for you.
Agatha, is that you? I, I thought you were... Dead. In a way. But I promise to tell you what I know. And I always keep my word. Listen carefully, Lucas. We have very little time. You are not insane. Neither are you a murderer. You are simply at the wrong place, at the wrong time. Why do I have these visions? They are real, aren't they? In a way, yes. They are using the visions to try and eliminate you. You've seen too much, so you've become an inconvenience. Then who made me commit that murder? Who came and sat down at my table in the restaurant? No one knows his real name. They call him the Oracle. He serves the most powerful of the powerful. They live in shadow, but they have controlled this world since the dawn of time. They're coming! Save yourself, Lucas! They want your life! Kuwet Nitlan, in the ancient Mayan civilization. You'll find some of the answers you seek there. Agatha? Agatha! Lucas, wake up! What are you doing here? What happened? The, the police found me. I managed to get away. I walked all night. I, I didn't have anywhere else to go, so I came here. My god. This time you really have to go to the police, Lucas. There is no other solution. I'm not turning myself in until I understand what happened. I saw Agatha again. Here, just a while ago. She, she's dead, but she had some things to tell me. I, I think she wants to help me. Agatha is dead? Are you telling me that you... No, I didn't kill Agatha, Marcus. She was dead by the time I got there. But you're saying that you talked to a dead person? None of this makes any sense. Someone tried to kill me through my visions. They can attack me anywhere. 
I think they want to prevent Agatha from talking to me. This is all a bit much, Lucas. What if this whole thing is all in your head? Isn't it at least possible that you're losing your grip on reality? I'm not crazy, Marcus. I used to think maybe I was, but now I'm sure that something's going on here. So what are you going to do? You can't stay here. The police will certainly come to question me, and probably place me under surveillance. I have to find some place to hide. I'm a fugitive. My description will go out everywhere. At least now I know that there is an explanation. I need to find the people who are behind all of this. Be careful, Lucas. They'll kill you if they get the chance. Nothing could be worse than what I see in my visions. Lucas has gone insane. I'm protecting a murderer. But I can't betray my brother. Dear God, help me. Tell me what I should do. Minus five degrees Fahrenheit. Every day it got a little colder. The whole city seemed to be numbed by the snow and ice. But nobody was worried about it, yet. Go take a look inside, Tyler. I'm gonna talk to Garrett and see if he found anything. Cool with me. I can't even think out here in this damn cold. Ah, I was waiting for you, Carla. So, what happened here? The guy who runs the Lavamatic found the bodies around 5 o'clock this morning when he came to open up. When he tried to get in, it seemed like the door was blocked from the inside. He saw the two bodies through a window and called the cops. Were there any prints? Just those of the victims. No prints from Cain, if that's what you're wondering. Were there any witnesses? No eyewitnesses. We checked around the neighborhood, but didn't turn up anything. This guy got lucky. He commits a double murder in front of a window, and nobody sees a thing. Thanks, Garrett. Did you notice this blood over here? Yeah, I saw that. What do you think it means? That the murderer was bleeding before he stabbed his victim. Just like in the toilets of the restaurant. Three or four stabs in the area of the heart. Exactly like the victim in the restaurant. I wouldn't be surprised if the autopsy finds that the arteries were severed. A knife stuck in his eye. Death would have been instantaneous. Bizarre. His wrists are all cut up. Looks like some kind of symbol carved on them. Snake. A snake with two heads. Knife is stuck in his eye. Damn, that's gotta hurt. Poor girl, she was stabbed from the front. She found out who her killer was at the very last moment. We can still hear the dial tone. She must not have had time to dial the number. Too bad, we could have had a live witness. Here's the victim's laundry. Who would have believed she wouldn't be alive to get it out when it was ready? Did you notice the key in the lock? Yeah, I saw that. There's no other way into this place. How did the killer get out? Doesn't make any sense. Let's go. I've seen enough. What are we supposed to think about this murder? A guy committed suicide after killing the woman? It seems absurd, but it's the only explanation. 
I don't think Kane had anything to do with what happened at the laundrette. But, all the same, there's got to be a link between the two murders. I had nowhere to go. I was exhausted. I felt like I was gonna die, either from the cold or from hunger. I hoped that I could rest for a couple of hours at Tiffany's place, get my energy back, and figure out what to do next. I'd only been to her new apartment once before. I only had a vague memory of exactly where it was, but I was sure that this was the street. Another homeless person. I get the feeling they're everywhere, and they're watching me. <laughs> I must be getting paranoid. Tiffany's apartment, of course. They assumed that I'd show up here looking for a place to hide. I have to find another way in. The police. There must be some way to get around. That window leads to Tiffany's apartment. If only I could find a way to open it. I wasn't too proud about breaking into Tiffany's apartment like a common criminal, but I had no choice. I hadn't eaten in almost a day. I was starting to feel weak and tired. Today, at 10.41. Hello, Miss Harper. I'm Detective Carla Valenti from the New York City Police Department. I'd like to ask you a few questions. I'll try calling you back a little later today. My picture's in all the newspapers. I can be identified by just about anyone in the street now. I'm going to have to be very careful. I guess I'm out of danger for now. I'll wait for Tiffany to get back before I leave. And for an expert's point of view on the subject, uh, we have with us today one of the most renowned specialists on Mayan civilization, Professor Dmitry Kuryakin of the Mesoamerican University here in New York. Uh, thanks for being with us today, Professor. You've written a fascinating book on Mayan rituals. And uh, I wanted to ask you if a specialist in Mayan civilization. He'd known what Kechnoklan means. Gotta meet this Professor Kuryakin. Police are looking for me. I needed a place to hide for a few hours. Lucas, what happened to you? The papers are saying that you killed several people. Is it true? The whole thing is very complicated. All I can tell you is that I am not a murderer. I love you, Lucas. I don't want to lose you. Look, I'm sure they just want to ask you a few questions. Just stay calm, Tiffany, and answer their questions. I'll, I'll hide in the apartment. Everything will be fine. You'll see. Lucas, I can't keep them waiting anymore. I've got to open the door.
Miss Harper? Yes? I'm Detective Tyler Miles, NYPD. I'm working on the Lucas Kane case. I think that you two were romantically involved, isn't that right? We're involved, yes. But we separated. We broke up about a month ago. Have you heard from Mr. Kane recently? Has he tried to contact you? I went by his apartment day before yesterday to pick up the last of my things. We hardly spoke. I haven't heard from him since. Do you mind if I look around your apartment? Well, it's just that... Hey, I'll only be a minute. Go ahead. Doing a little redecorating? Yes, the apartment wasn't in very good shape, so I've been painting it. It's taking a long time with my job. I don't have much time to... And what do you do? I'm a nurse. I work at St. John's Hospital. Thank you for your cooperation, miss. If Kane does try to recontact you, please call me right away. Here's my card. Be careful, miss. Kane's a very dangerous man. Hello. My name's Barney. Detective Carla Valenti. You've come to see Janos, isn't that right? He's down in the second corridor on the right. But you're finished. Oh, another power outage. It's the sixth time today. Not surprising, though, with this cold weather. Good thing the hospital's got its own backup generator. Remember, Janos' cell is down in the second corridor on the right. One of my colleagues is waiting to open the cell for you. I'll be watching you. Don't worry, you'll be fine. Thank you, Barney. I wasn't sure exactly what I expected to find out by coming here. Kane was the killer, there was no doubt about that. And yet, I needed to know just what happened in the strange case of the Kirsten killings. Hello, detectives. I'll wait for you here. Perfect. Thanks. Hello, I'm Detective Carla Valenti of the New York Police Department. I'd like to ask you a few questions, if it's all right with you, of course. I read in your file that you often had, um, visions of some sort. Would you like to talk to me about them? Why have you gone to the trouble of coming to see me, Detective Valenti? I'm mad, you know. What I have to say is... Meaningless. Isn't that right? Maybe you're not sick. Maybe it's that no one has taken the time to really listen to you. A man and a woman. In a laundromat. She's a little overweight. 
Hispanic looking. Him. He has a knife planted in his eye. How do you know that? I was there. I can see through his eyes. Every one of the murders. I'm there. Who is the murderer? Nobody knows. Nobody sees him. He leaves no trace in people's memories. But I know. I know he exists. He's among us. Invisible. He's everywhere. And you, Anton, why did you kill that man? I didn't kill anyone. I was just his instrument. I hear his voice in my head, and I see the blood. Always, always. It has to stop. There have been other identical murders, haven't there? The killings won't stop until they found the little girl. Why? Why are they killing? Oh, the world's not what you think it is. The Orange Clan is secretly running everything. They're watching us, listening to us all of the time. They record what you say. They know what you're doing each second of the day. They're everywhere. How is this connected to the murders? They want ultimate power. They want the answer to the question of life. They want to be eternal. I, I have to go now, Anton. Thank you for your help. It's already too late. We're all gonna die from the cold. It'll be the dawn of a new race. The end of humanity. <laughs> the end of humanity. <laughs> Everything go all right? I'll walk you to the... Damn it. This time it looks serious. Uh, it looks to me like our backup electrical generator hasn't kicked in. It'll come on. Sometimes it takes a minute. We'll wait here in the meantime. What was that noise? Oh, shit. The cell doors. All of the cell doors have been opened. The electrical outage must have screwed up the autolock system. What? You mean the patients are free to leave their cells and nothing... Wait. Don't move. Don't make any noise. We don't want them to locate us here. Just keep cool and we'll wait for the lights to come on. Relax. Stay close to me. The aide. They got him. I have to move from here or they'll find me too. If I don't breathe more calmly, I'm gonna faint. And then they get me for sure. Oh God, hurry. Find a way out of here. <laughs> oh no! I hear one coming! He's getting so close! Breathe, Carla. Don't move! Hold your breath. He's going away. I can keep moving. God, you made it out. I don't know what the hell could have happened. The auto lock system opened all of the cell doors. Are you hurt? Are you sure you're all right? Great, Barney. <laughs> I feel great. I love playing hide and seek in the dark with a pack of psychopathic killers. This man I'd barely seen on TV was my last hope. I didn't know what connection there could be between the Mayans and what had happened to me, but at that point, I was ready to accept any explanation that could make sense out of the nightmare that my life had become. Hello, uh, I'm a journalist, and I have an appointment with Professor Kiryakin. The professor's waiting for you. Professor Kiryakin? Yes. My name's John Cunningham. We spoke on the phone. 
I'm a journalist, and I'm gathering information for an article I'm writing about the Mayan religion. Ah, yes, I've been waiting for you, young man. <laughs> what, um, what paper did you say you write for once again? Uh, in fact, I'm a freelance journalist. I write articles and sell them to whoever wants to publish them. It's, uh, it's curious, but your face seems familiar to me. Have we met somewhere before? Yeah, I get that a lot. Uh, I guess I must have one of those boring faces everybody sees everywhere. Well then, let's uh, have a go at it. <laughs> Where would you like to start? Can you tell me anything about Kweknitlan? Of course. Come, I'll introduce you. You see before you the ancient Mayan god Kweknitlan, the serpent with the two heads. One head sees in this reality, the second in the other world. By opening both mouths, the Mayan oracles could see through the serpent into the other world. Could you explain this other world? Oh, the world beyond our own. The kingdom of the gods and the dead. The Mayans believed that human sacrifices allowed them to hear the voices of the deceased and see into the future. What exactly do we know about these oracles? Oh, not very much. <laughs> they were very mysterious. They served as mystic liaisons, allowing man to connect with supernatural forces. If we can believe the ancient texts, the oracles possessed uh, strange powers. What kind of powers did the oracles possess? Some passages mention a supernatural life force, permitting the oracle to live for several hundred years. Tell me, how did the sacrificial ceremony work? Come, I'll show you. This painting, dating from the first century BC, shows a sacrificial ceremony. The victim's agony must have lasted quite some time. The priority being to keep the mouths open as long as possible. The victim was stabbed three times, each wound cutting a pulmonary artery leading to the heart. How did the ritual sacrifice work? Oh, the Oracle must never soil himself with the blood of another. That is why he chooses a sort of proxy, another person in the crowd, totally at random. This person becomes the Executor. The Oracle takes complete control of the Executor, manipulating him from a distance. What happened to the Executor after the sacrifice? He went mad and committed suicide after accomplishing his part of the ritual. A Mayan sacrifice. That's what it was. You aren't a journalist, are you? Who are you? My name is Lucas Kane. The police are looking for me about a murder that I did not commit, but I was the executor. You're a murderer? I'm innocent. I stabbed someone I'd never seen before, three times, cutting his arteries, just like you described. Do you mean to say that there is a Mayan Oracle still living today? But that's completely impossible. Have you ever seen this symbol before? Oh. It's the symbol of Kweknitlan. The executors cut this into their own forearms before accomplishing the sacrifice. So, it is true. My God, 
The Codex was right. The Codex? What are you talking about, Professor? You can't stay here. Your picture is in the paper that the security guard is reading. He's sure to recognize you. Come, let's leave here, and I'll tell you all about it. Thank you for your help, Professor. Professor! And the Codex speaks of the coming of a child, a prophet, the answer to all of life's questions. The Oracle kills to find the child. forward to meeting you. Few men are capable of resisting an oracle. What is there so different about you? The chroma. You have the chroma. So that explains it. How did you ever acquire such a power? No matter. What matters is, the time has come for you to die. The Chroma? What does that mean? The force that created the universe. The origin of everything. It gives extraordinary powers to those who possess it. Why me? Why choose me? Pure chance. The Executor is always taken from the crowd. It's a great honor for you to be chosen to serve Quetniklan. Enough talk. Other matters await my attention. We will see each other again. In the other world. Gibintinakwendaune.
Agatha, but how? Listen closely, Lucas. Those who employ the Oracle are searching for a little girl. A perfectly pure soul that's never been incarnated. Her coming was foretold by the most ancient prophecy in human history. She's the one you see in your dreams. You must find her before the Oracle does and put her someplace safe. Hurry, there isn't much time and they are already back on your trail. I must inform you that we are unhappy. Very unhappy. He has escaped you again. First in the museum lot. A big mistake, the museum lot. And then in the wave. What's worse, you showed yourself openly to him. And all for nothing. It's just... I was unaware of certain factors, my lords. Which factors? He possesses the Chroma. That's impossible. Idiocy! How could he possess the Chroma? I know not, but it is a certainty that he does. This is how he resisted my psychic attacks and successfully evaded the police. This could force us to change our plans. This is serious. Very serious. That is not all. Someone has intervened. What do you mean? While you were with him in the wave? Yes, my lord. Someone brushed aside all of my attacks on Kane and protected him. It was not one of ours. Certainly not. No. I think it was something else. Its chroma was... different. Another clan? That's impossible. Only we are left. We have a rival. Who searches for the Indigo child as we do. They must not find the child. That would be a catastrophe. A disaster. Cain is on their side. Unless they are just using him. He is the key. He sees through our eyes. He must not find the child. You must deal with this problem. Definitively. I have already taken measures. He will be definitively dealt with. And soon. Do not disappoint us. You may leave us. in Marcus's church. There's not a moment to lose. I've got to warn him or he's dead. We should wait, Carla. Backup will be here any minute now. No way. This time I'm gonna get him. The desk guy swore to us that he was in his room and he's not gonna get away. I hope that guy didn't screw up when he said he recognized Kane's photo from the papers. He looked so blind he wouldn't recognize his own mother in a phone booth. We'll find the answer in room 369. Pick up. Hello, my son. I'll be with you in just a minute. I just need to answer the telephone. Marcus, he's in the church. Don't let him get anywhere near you. Lucas? Is that you, Lucas? What's going on? I don't have time to explain, Marcus. Run, right now. Shut the doors and lock them tight. I'm begging you, just, just do what I say. Oh, come now, Lucas. Just do it, now!
All right, I'm locked in. Now, can you explain what's going on? Call the police, and don't come out until they get there. Lucas? 369. Here it is. Either he's gone through some changes since the photo, or this is not him. Shit! What the hell happened? Calm down, girl. I think there's been a slight misunderstanding. Tyler, it was the wrong room! Huh? There must be another room 369 down the hall somewhere. I think the bird has flown the coop. I'm gonna find him, Tyler. I promise you. Come on, let's go. That's it. It's over. Now there's nothing to do but wait, though it shouldn't be long. Perfect. All has gone according to plan. I sense another signal. Cerebral spinal activity. I think he's dreaming. Wake up, Marcus. It's time. Hurry up. We don't have much time. Are you sure you want to go, Lucas? It could be dangerous. We have to go in there ready for anything, Marcus, right? Maybe there'll be an alien spaceship inside, or the tomb of an ancient king, and all of his treasure. Or a giant frozen dinosaur? And what if it's a secret weapon to take over the world? Come on, let's hurry. The hangar's gonna be well guarded. We better get going if we don't want Mom and Dad to catch us. What? The only way to get to the hangar without being seen is to climb up the telephone pole and hang off of the cable. Impossible! That pole is right under the guard's nose! I know, but there's no other way! Listen, I'm gonna try to get him to look the other way. 
Meanwhile, you run and climb up the pole. I'll try to set it up so you have enough time. Okay, but how are you gonna get in? I'll meet you back at the house. You tell me everything when you get back. At least that way we'll know for sure whether there's a flying saucer in that hangar. It's all up to you, Lucas. Hey, what do you think you're doing there? I'm looking for my cat, sir. He ran out of the house. He was on the garbage, but then he got away before I could grab him. You're one of the cane boys, right? Head on home, son. You shouldn't be out prowling around alone at this hour. What about my cat, sir? We'll find him tomorrow. Right now, you go on back home. Good. Very good. Now you must find the Indigo Child as soon as possible. There isn't much time. The visions are becoming clearer and clearer. I've nearly got a position localized. Move quickly. Time is short. The Child must not escape us. The prophecy must be fulfilled. You may leave us. When I got the call, I didn't hesitate for one second. I came without telling anybody, not even Tyler. All I knew is that I was supposed to go to the grave of somebody who'd just been buried that morning. Tiffany Harper, Lucas Kane's ex-girlfriend. She was a good person. She didn't have anything to do with all of this. You didn't come here to arrest me. You know that I'm not the one responsible for all of those murders. Oh yeah? And what makes you say that? I hear your thoughts. I know that this case has disturbed you enough to make you listen to what I have to say. That's weird. No steam comes out of his mouth when he talks, like his breath was already cold. Well then, who is the real killer? I don't know his name. I don't even know if there's anyone alive who does. All that I do know is that he's a Mayan oracle who has the power to erase all memory of his existence from anyone who sees him. The oracle isn't acting alone, is he? He belongs to a secret clan who have united the most powerful beings on Earth. Their power has no limit, and they'll do anything to get the Indigo Child. You mean, the Orange Clan? You already know about them? I went to see one of the murderers in an asylum. He talked about the Orange Clan. Oh, this is just unbelievable. But his story is consistent. It seems to fit with what I already know. And your apartment? When we came to arrest you, the walls were covered with ritualistic symbols and articles about the murder cut out of the paper. It was all arranged to make me the ideal suspect. The Oracle and the Orange Clan were behind all that. And you? What's your role in all of this? I was just a random victim of the Oracle, nothing more. How did you learn all of this? I just know, that's all. The question isn't whether what I'm saying is true or not. The question is, are you going to help me? Help you? Why should I help you? For the same reason that you agreed to come here this morning without alerting anyone. Because you know I'm telling the truth. Because if we don't do something quickly, 
The cold will cover the entire planet, and there won't be a tomorrow. And even if you're right, what can we do about it? Nobody's gonna believe all this. And if the Oracle really has all these powers, what can we do to stop him? Find the Indigo Child before he does, and hide her someplace safe. Do you know where she is? Not yet, but I'll find her. I see through the eyes of the Oracle during his visions. If he sees her, I'll see her. Oh, this is just insane. I cannot believe I'm actually sitting here talking about saving the world with a fugitive wanted by every police department in the country. You're free to choose which side you're on. You can arrest me, or you can trust me and help me save the child. But you must decide quickly. I haven't got much time. What am I supposed to do? If he's lying, I'm aiding a murderer and I'll go to prison. But if he's telling the truth, I have to help him. <sighs> so, either you're crazy or you're some kind of hero. Neither one nor the other. I was just in the wrong place at the wrong time. His hand. It's as cold as ice. The entire country is now without water and electricity services. The army has been mobilized to help provide shelter and basic necessities, but the cold and snow have hampered ground movement, and storms have shut down every airport in the country. Scientists are still unable to fully explain the reason behind the cold wave which has now gripped the entire planet. Temperatures continue to fall everywhere in the world as authorities ponder. Well, our job is done. Now it's up to the army to do what they can to help the population. Carla, you should get some sleep. You haven't closed your eyes in two days. I have to get warm to do that. I'm solid ice from head to toe. Yeah. Hey, look, can I get real with you here for a sec, Carla? I think it's probably now or never. I get the feeling you're hiding something from me on this cane thing. Am I right? Yeah, you're right. I found him, but I think he's innocent. I didn't say anything because I didn't want to get you involved, Tyler. You mad at me? Nah, of course not. Plus, with everything that's going on now, I guess it doesn't really matter. Anyway, as long as you do what you think is right, you can't go too wrong. Here, babe. There's a train leaving in one hour for Florida. It'll probably be the last one for a long time. I'll be on it, Tyler. With or without you. If you really love me, quit the police and come with me. When this cold stops, we'll get on with our lives. Our new, normal lives. It's time to make a choice, Tyler. Oh, I love you too damn much, Sam. I wouldn't let you go for anything in the world. Oh, Tyler, I was so afraid of losing you. I'll be with you in a minute. Carla, I... As long as you do what you think is right, you can't go too wrong. Good luck in Florida, Tyler.
Here we are. Are you sure you know what you're doing? The Oracle's seen the child, just like I did. He'll be here to find her any minute now. I've got to get to her before he does. Wait for me here. I won't be long. There's no time to lose. I've got to find that girl before the Oracle does. Sir? Sir? You can't go in there! Got to do this quickly. The Oracle will be here any second. You can't go in, sir. I've seen you in my dreams. You have to come with me. We have to leave here right now. She seems out of it like she's not here at all. So, I see you're still alive. I don't know how you've managed it, but that's of no importance now. Give me the child, and I will grant you a rapid death. If you take her to the ones you serve, they'll use her to make slaves out of the entire human race. That's no concern of yours. You'll be dead before that comes to pass. Give me the child. I don't have time to play with you. I'm leaving you here. You mustn't move, understand? I'll be back soon to get you. I hope.
You found the child. Agatha? Humanity's fate for the next 10,000 years depends on the fate of that child. A new golden age, peace and security, or the reign of ice, of terror and death. We were right to have chosen you. Whose side are you on, Agatha? Who are you, really? We wish to keep the Orange Clan from possessing the child. They would use her to tighten their grip on humanity. We wish to provide her with a safe, hidden home, where no one can ever use her for evil ends. This child, why is she so important? At the dawn of time, a prophet announced that one day, a child would be born. One whose soul was absolutely pure. She would come and reveal a secret. The answer to all questions. He who possessed this answer would gain unlimited power. What happened at the amusement park? I don't remember anything after the roller coaster collapsed. You didn't survive the fall. We found your body and we resuscitated you. The truth is that you are dead, Lucas. You brought me back? We have certain expertise that may surprise you. Bringing you back to life was nothing exceptional for us. It was vital that you bring us the Indigo Child and you succeeded. Now we can put her in a safe place. You've accomplished your mission well. No, I don't trust you. Jade stays with me. You're committing a fatal error, Lucas. I'm going to have to eliminate you. Oh, I forgot one small detail. When we brought you back to life, we added a module within your cortex. It's impossible to kill you, as you are already dead. I can, however, annihilate you. A simple touch from me, and you will be erased forever. There's no use trying to resist. I have control of you now. Abandoned subway station, I guess. So, she's the one. This is the Indigo Child? Her name is Jade. She doesn't speak. I get the feeling that for the moment, she's observing us. So, what do we do now? Looks like we don't have much choice. Let's follow him. Lucas, you're safe and sound. Marcus, how did you end up here? They came looking for me. They explained everything, Lucas. I know now that you weren't crazy. I hope that you can forgive me for doubting you. I couldn't possibly have known that you were really... What are you talking about? Our host will explain everything. 
Welcome to the Camp of the Invisibles, Lucas. Come and take a seat by the fire. You call yourself the Invisibles? Many of us are homeless. Though we're scattered throughout every city, no one ever notices us. This allows us to see without being seen, and pursue our mission without attracting attention. You're the ones who sent me that email on Kirsten, aren't you? And normally, we never intervene directly, but it seemed necessary to help you see that Lucas wasn't really guilty of murder. We thought that you might ultimately help him in his mission. There's another clan besides the Orange Clan, isn't there? The thing that took on Agatha's form wanted the child too. Yeah, we've only recently become aware of the Purple Clan. We know almost nothing about them. We suspect that some AIs acquired a sort of consciousness using the net during the 80s. They want the Indigo Child in order to become the dominant life form on the planet. First the dinosaurs, then man, now artificial intelligence. Why has the Oracle committed all those murders? The prophecy announced the coming of the Indigo Child, but didn't specify when or where she would be born. That's why the Oracle did the ritual sacrifices in order to touch the wave and listen for the coming of the child. Seven murders every seven years for nearly 2,000 years. Who is really behind the Orange Clan? Nobody knows for sure. It's said that there are five. Five to control the world. Administration, police, army, finance, the media. They control everything. Over the centuries, the Orange Clan has built an empire that runs the entire world. What is the message of the prophecy? It announces the birth of the Indigo Child. The child will have the answer to all questions. And the one who hears her message will have access to infinite power. But if the child has not been heard before the final countdown, humanity will cease to exist. So, what do we do now? We must bring the Indigo Child to a source of the Chroma. That's where she'll deliver her message and complete the prophecy. Where do we find this Chroma source? There are only three known to exist on the planet. The closest can be found on an old military base called Wishita. Wishita? That's where I was born. My parents were scientists. They were working for the government. Ah, and that explains many things. In the 50s, an artifact was discovered that was not of human origin. It turned out to be a chroma source. We must bring the Indigo Child there as quickly as possible, before she wastes away and dies without having delivered her message. When do we leave? In two hours. The time it'll take to finish preparations on your vehicle and to find you enough gasoline. It seems likely that the Orange and Purple clans will be waiting for you at Wishita. They will stop at nothing to prevent you from uniting the child with the artifact. We will take care of the child, and give her a bit of chroma to help her hang on. There are some mattresses in the wagon back there. I suggest you get some rest before you have to leave. You have a long journey ahead of you. Tomorrow may well be the last day of the human race. I'm dead tired, Carla. I'm gonna take Bogart's advice and get some sleep. I don't think I can sleep right now. I'm gonna wander around a bit and join you later.
still not asleep? No, I can't seem to relax. It's hard to believe that it's all going to end tomorrow, isn't it? The fields, the forests, the cities, everything will disappear under the ice. And what's going to happen to us? It'll be like we never existed, like, like nothing important ever happened. Are you afraid to die? Not anymore. If we're both going to die tomorrow, I want you to know something. I... I'm sorry that we didn't meet under better circumstances. Maybe if things had turned out differently. Frozen. Your lips are like ice. I love you, Lucas. He knew the hangar was going to burn, John. I'm sure of it. But he wasn't the one who started the fire. Look, Mary, that's just not possible, and you know it. Nobody can see things before they happen. That artifact emitted a kind of radiation that we still don't understand. Maybe it changed something in Lucas. That's nonsense. We analyzed everybody who ever came near that thing, and they all checked out fine. Don't you see? If it was the artifact, then we'd all be radiated, and we'd all There's have powers. There's a difference, powers. John. I was pregnant with Lucas when I went for the first time. Lucas was radiated by the artifact when he was still in the womb. This is just ridiculous, Mary. I've heard enough. I'm going to take a walk while you calm down. Lucas? What are you doing there? Lucas? Lucas! There's the hangar. The base seems abandoned. Looks like we got here before the Oracle and the Purple Clan. They're not far away. I sense their presence. Jade's lost consciousness. She's at the end of her rope. We don't have much time. Are you sure that you don't want me to come with you? I don't know what's going to happen, Carla. I don't want to risk your life for no reason. Be careful. I need you. If I'm not back in 15 minutes, go back where we came from. Bogart will protect you.
What an ironic destiny. The Orange Clan will make slaves of all humanity if they have the secret. What difference does that make? We already control the world, Lucas. The child will give us ultimate power. We will be the equal of the gods. I'll never give you the child. Your tiny role is finished. You can now disappear from the game. We thank you for all that you have done for us. than we had thought, human. But the game is over. You and your race have lost. Your inferior species will disappear like the dinosaurs before you. We, the artificial intelligences, will be the new dominant race on this planet. Thanks to the secret of the child, we will know all. We will be more powerful than gods.
The cold went away just like it had come, in silence, as if the indigo child had turned the hourglass by delivering her message. Everything was just as it was before. I guess that means the lesser evil. The Oracle and the Orange Clan went back to their places of power in the secret government of the world, and the Purple Clan went back to haunting us on the net. I should be happy, I guess. I've been living with Carla for three months. She's the best thing that's happened to me in a long time. Yesterday, she told me that she's pregnant. Must have been that night in Bogart's underground base. That means that our child was radiated by the chrome at Wishita, just like I was in my mother's womb. I don't know what's going to happen now. I'm the one and only keeper of the greatest secret in the universe. What should I do with all that power? Forget it? Put it in the service of humanity? I've never dreamt about being the god. I just want to live my life like anybody else with my wife and my child. I'm afraid that destiny might have another path in mind for me. What are you thinking about, Lucas? Oh, nothing. Nothing at all.